Hello, this is Arash Arshi from the Ohio Health Riverside Methodist Hospital and the Ohio Health Research Institute. I'd like to thank the editors for inviting us to share our thoughts on the topic of coronary artery reaccess after transcatheter aortic valve replacement. I'd also like to acknowledge my co-authors and colleagues, Dr. Stephen Yakubov, who is the Chief of Interventional Cardiology and Structural Heart Disease at Ohio Health, Dr. Kevin Stiver, and Dr. Carlos Sanchez. These are our disclosures. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement has truly revolutionized the management of patients with severe aortic stenosis. Clinical trials have established the role of TAVR in the care of these patients, beginning with the Partner 1 trial, Cohort A, which led to the approval of TAVR for patients at extreme risk for surgery. This was soon followed by the Partner 1 trial, Cohort B, and later the CoreValve U.S. Pivotal High Risk Trial, establishing TAVR as an alternative to surgery for patients at high risk. And soon thereafter, the Partner 2 and SirTAVI trials for intermediate risk patients. In 2019, the safety and efficacy of TAVR in low-risk patients was demonstrated with equivalence and superiority to surgery. As such, the number of patients undergoing TAVR is increasing with TAVR being performed more commonly than surgery in patients with severe aortic stenosis. Coronary artery disease is common in patients undergoing TAVR. Some are about 50%, depending on the specific cohort. This prevalence is steadily declining as TAVR is being performed more and more often in younger and healthier patients. Although PCI pre-TAVR is supported by the PCI Appropriate Use Criteria Guidelines, clinical trials have been somewhat conflicting in terms of demonstrating benefit to PCI prior to TAVR. Justification for PCI prior to TAVR includes the comprehensive treatment of cardiac disease, reducing ischemic risk during valve intervention, and simplifying coronary intervention without interference from the valve prosthesis. As patients and referring physicians continue to choose TAVR as the primary treatment for severe aortic stenosis, and as the indications for TAVR expand to include lower risk patients and those with fewer comorbidities, it follows that there will be more patients living longer and more active lives following valve replacement. This creates the ever-increasing potential need for coronary angiography and intervention in patients with previous TAVR. Due to the anatomic relation of the coronary ostea to the prosthetic valve, coronary artery access may be challenging post-TAVR. In general, coronary angiography and intervention is feasible post-TAVR, but success rates are lower following the implantation of the Medtronic core valve, and in particular, the engagement of the right coronary artery may be challenging. We will now review specific features of the commonly available transcatheter valve systems and valve deployment strategies, followed by techniques in catheter selection to aid in successful post-TAVR coronary artery engagement. Pre-procedural planning with CT angiography has become the standard of care prior to TAVR and is absolutely essential for assessing the aortic valve anatomy and the potential for coronary reaccess and coronary obstruction. The specific anatomic factors that we consider include the coronary ostea height from the annulus marked by the purple horizontal line, the sinus of valsalva width, and the width and height of the sinotubular junction. These measurements must be taken into consideration when selecting the specific valve prosthesis. Device-specific factors may also impact coronary reaccess. In particular, commissural alignment of the transcatheter valve with respect to the coronary ostea plays a significant role in determining feasibility of coronary access. In open-heart surgery, the diseased valve is typically excised and the bioprosthetic valve is sutured to the annulus in a fashion such that the prosthetic commissural frame posts align with the native commissures thereby avoiding commissural post overlap with the native coronary ostea. During TAVR, the commissural posts cannot be reliably aligned and there is a risk of landing a post directly in front of the coronary ostea, 
which can potentially impede coronary reaccess. We will discuss strategies to improve this orientation with the Medtronic core valve. As a review, the self-expanding Medtronic core valve Evolute system has a diamond-shaped cell nitinol frame with three distinct components. The inflow, which provides radial force and is covered by a ceiling skirt to minimize paravalvular leak. The constrained central portion, which is typically about where the coronary arteries take off and the outflow portion that extends above the sinotubular junction. The commissures are at 26 millimeter height with one of the posts aligned with the C-tab paddle on the valve frame. In a paper published in Circulation Cardiovascular Interventions in 2019, Dr. Tang and colleagues first described the impact of the geometrical orientation of transcatheter valves during initial deployment on the commissural alignment with coronary ostea. The so-called hat marker on the core valve evolute delivery system may aid in orientation of the commissure. The hat marker is identified in this image by the red arrow. When the hat marker is oriented toward the greater curve of the aorta on the coplanar three-cusp angiographic view, severe coronary overlap of the left main RCA or both carries the lowest incidence of about 23%. The hat marker orients toward the outer curve most reliably when the flush ports on the delivery system are directed to the three o'clock position. On the other hand, when the hat marker was oriented towards the lesser curve of the aorta, as identified by the red arrow in this image, using the same coplanar view, the frequency of coronary overlap with a commissural post was significantly higher at 75%. The design of the Edward CP and XT and CP and 3 valves differs from the core valve. Instead of commissural posts, there is a three millimeter tab or pledget located on the commissural upper row cells. Although the overall frame height of the S3 valve is shorter than the core valve Evolute, these tabs may still end up directly in front of a coronary ostium, especially if coronary takeoff is low. Intentional commissural alignment of the S3 valve by, for example, crimping the valve at different specific orientations is currently not possible. Acute coronary obstruction during TAVR is a potentially catastrophic, but fortunately a relatively rare event. It is much more common when performing valve and valve procedures in up to 4% of cases. TAVR in TAVR is especially of concern as the alignment of the commissural posts with coronary ostea is not predictable for either the initial or subsequent procedure. Risk factors for coronary obstruction include female gender, narrow sinus of valsalva width, which is defined really as less than 30 millimeters, and low coronary osteal height under 10 millimeters. Measurement of the bioprosthetic valve to coronary artery distance, abbreviated as the VTC, is also important. A VTC of less than three millimeters is associated with a significantly higher risk of coronary obstruction. There are also two general strategies to reduce the risk of coronary obstruction during the procedure. The first is the Basilica procedure, which has been described elsewhere. It stands for the bioprosthetic or native aortic scallop intentional leaflet laceration to prevent iatrogenic coronary obstruction. Essentially, electrocautery of a stiff guide wire is used to pierce the base of the aortic valve cusp, and that guide wire is then snared in the left ventricle, which creates a wire loop. An uncoated part of the wire is then positioned at the leaflet, and electrocautery is again applied to split the leaflet. Upon subsequent deployment of the transcatheter valve, the split leaflet is then splayed in an effort to limit coronary obstruction. This strategy may be applied to native valves or to surgical or transcatheter bioprostheses. The second general strategy includes coronary protection during the valve deployment. For patients at very high risk of coronary obstruction, the chimney snorkel technique may be necessary. 
Essentially here, the coronary artery of concern is engaged with a guide catheter and ideally a guide extender prior to valve replacement. A coronary guide wire with either a balloon or even a stent is placed within the coronary artery in waiting. After deployment of the transcatheter valve, the coronary ostium is then stented with a very long stent that extends above the prosthesis. The proximal segment of that stent is then flared to improve flow and to allow easier access in the future. After successful transcatheter aortic valve replacement, if a patient with a Medtronic core valve evolute requires coronary angiography and intervention, we suggest the following algorithm. It's our practice to first perform aortography with a diagnostic pigtail catheter within the outflow portion of the valve in an LAO projection. We then identify the cell frame adjacent to the coronary ostium or one cell above to access. We recommend the use of a J-tip wire to introduce a catheter into the valve. In terms of specific catheters, our initial approach is to utilize standard Judkins left and right catheters first, but oftentimes a half size smaller will be necessary as the concave waist of the transcatheter valve measures only 20 to 24 millimeters in diameter depending on which valve size is used, and this is considerably smaller than the native aortic root. If we have difficulty with initial catheter selection, we then change catheters, and we have had excellent success utilizing the Icari family of catheters. If despite changing catheters, engagement of the coronary artery is not possible, then it is likely that a commissural post is located right in front of the ostium, and non-selective angiography can be for performed from any cell above the artery. If selective angiography is required or if intervention is necessary, then passing a coronary wire into the artery followed by a guide extender system may help facilitate advancement of the guide catheter. There are two scenarios that provide particular challenges when accessing coronary arteries following TAVR with the Medtronic Evolute system. Before moving any further, I must acknowledge the work of Dr. Udi and colleagues who have written an outstanding review and methods paper on coronary angiography and intervention following TAVR in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology in 2018. And with permission, we have reprinted a number of their excellent diagrams. The depth of implant is one such area of potential challenge, particularly when the valve is deployed high or too aortic and the coronary ostia are at low or average takeoffs. On the left is an optimally positioned transcatheter valve. The red line depicts the annular plane and the red dot the coronary ostium. The red X's indicate adjacent cells in the frame that may be used to access the coronary artery. On the right is a diagram of a valve deployed in a relatively aortic position with the coronary ostium located below the top of the ceiling skirt and access from adjacent cells may be difficult. The second challenging scenario arises when the commissural post lines up right in front of the coronary ostia. The top of the commissural post is located at 26 millimeters from the bottom of the frame. On the diagram on the right, the annular plane is again depicted by the red horizontal line. The red dots represent the location of coronary ostia heights of 10, 14, and 18 millimeters from above the annular plane. The red X's are the corresponding closest cells that can be used to access the artery. Very low coronary takeoffs in this alignment scenario will provide severe challenges in coronary engagement. We previously described in our algorithm that a half size smaller Judkins left catheter facilitates engagement of the left main given the small waist size of the core valve compared to the native aorta. However, in our practice, we also utilize significantly longer Judkins left catheters such that the proximal bend rests against the ascending aorta above the core valve waist. On the left, an image A is an example of a Judkins left six diagnostic catheter. This may also be a suitable guide to select as an alternative to standard extra backup guides, which are dependent on aortic root support, which is less available within the frame of the valve. 
Extra backup guides are also prone to kinking, especially where they cross the cells of the valve frame. For right coronary access, typically a standard Judkins right catheter will work just fine as shown in the center image. If the sinuses are large and distant from the valve frame, an Amplatz left or right catheter may be used. If these catheters are not successful, one may consider an Icari guide catheter. We are using an Icari 1.5 guide catheter to access the RCA on image C on the right. Coronary reaccess following implantation of the Edward Sapien valve is typically feasible. The Sapien 3 valve has a taller frame compared to the XT system and as a result the coronary artery will often need to be accessed through the upper cells of the valve frame. These upper cells are relatively large and as a result interference with coronary ostia is uncommon. A high 90-10 implant is often desirable to minimize contact with the LV outflow tract in an effort to reduce pacemaker implantation rates. One scenario that may prove challenging is a high implant with low takeoffs of the coronary arteries. In the example on the left, with optimal valve deployment with respect to the aortic annulus, which is again depicted by the horizontal red line, most heights of coronary ostia marked by red dots would fall at the level of the upper cells and coronary engagement would be feasible. If the valve is deployed relatively high, the coronary ostia may fall well below the top of the skirt, thereby creating some challenges in coronary engagement. In this example of coronary angiography following TAVR with an Edward Sapien 3 valve, we have not altered our catheter selection and selective angiography using a Judkins left 3.5 diagnostic catheter as possible. We find this to be the case for most patients. Occasionally we will choose a guide catheter one size smaller. Our practice is to use guide extenders when performing a coronary intervention after implantation of a sepian valve in order to facilitate the removal of the guide at the completion of the procedure. Other transcatheter valve systems have been designed with unique coronary reaccess strategies. Figure A on the left depicts left main coronary artery angiography using a Judkins left 5 diagnostic catheter following lotus valve implantation. The Boston Scientific lotus valve is a mechanically expanding catheter valve system which is typically deployed below the ostea of the coronary arteries and rarely makes contact with the ascending aorta thereby avoiding interaction between the prosthesis and the native coronary artery ostea. The Boston Scientific Accurate Neo system, shown on the right, has a supraannular design with high commissural post and a low ceiling skirt, with facilitated coronary access due to its so-called free access design architecture. In conclusion, as transcatheter aortic valve replacement expands to younger and healthier patients, there is the potential need to reaccess coronary arteries over the longer lifespan of these patients. We must take coronary reaccess into consideration when selecting the specific transcatheter valve for a specific patient. Close scrutiny of the pre-procedure CT scan is crucial to aid in decision making and to help avoid and or mitigate the risk of acute coronary obstruction. We must continue to develop future transcatheter valve designs that give us better ability to predict and control commissural alignment with the coronary ostea. We must also continue to share our experiences and develop algorithms and strategies to optimize catheter selection and coronary engagement. I again want to thank the editors for inviting us to present, and I want to thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you find this information useful in your practice.